I am Anthony from Hashtag and on Sunday, June 28th, 2020, Masako X participated in a charity question and answer live stream with me. If you do not know who Masako X is, he is a voice actor best known as a member of the Team 4 Star YouTube channel. He currently hosts his own YouTube channel, Masako Extreme, where he creates stories based upon the Dragon Ball franchise. What you are about to see is part of the Q&A live stream. Due to a technological issue, Masako X was unable to participate via webcam, but was able to participate via voice chat. In advance, thanks for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe. Okay, so we have another question. Uh, Zekin1000 says, In the dub of the proposal scene, they cut the entire promise thing, and Goku said something like, Sometimes my brain doesn't know what my mouth says. Good things, good thing my heart does want to get married. So the dub changed it to him being more emotionally mature. What do you think? He, he says he really liked that they changed it. Yeah, I actually like that because it's been a while since I've seen the original Dragon Ball, but now that you brought that up again, it reminds me of that. And it's like, it feels... That's actually a really good line because it just shows that, yeah, yeah, I know, I'm maybe not that smart, but at the same time, I like, I don't want to upset people. Like, as in, I know what's right in my heart. It feels very schmaltzy, but at the same time, it's actually a really solid response. As in, like, you know, I like to be... I like making people happy and if this will make you happy i'm cool with that and I, I that's actually a really sweet line given the fact that goku's relatively straightforward and it's like you know he does have that say in honor without realizing he's a saiyan as in like he honors the promise that he made as a child and he holds his childhood very very dearly and he liked chi chi she thought he thought chi chi was cool and you know he made the promise why would he change it so it's actually a really good line. I, I'm all for that line. Okay, so what do you, what do you think? Because uh, we're talking about the the, the manga is doing the Moro saga. And yes. uh, we haven't, we, we kind of, well, there's rumors that the series is coming back in some form. Uh, uh -huh. Now, now I, I don't, I haven't read the manga. So um, how far are they into that? And do you think they would be able to take that as written and pretty much put it into this series or do you think they would need to modify it for the television audience well in terms of that um in terms of where they are right now you get the feeling that right now they've gone into like a final transformation of the main villain i won't spoil too much but you feel like they're now approaching the end game like maybe one or two more chapters so you feel like they're very close but I feel like what they're doing right now is trying to go back to the old model of storytelling in Dragon Ball. Because for the longest time, there'd be like several months gap between the manga and the anime. Meaning that the anime is adapting the manga, where super, the manga and the anime has sort of been their own thing. And that didn't really work that well. It was very disjointed, as it were. So you get the feeling that now maybe they're waiting for... They're waiting for certain things to kind of align themselves and to wait for the entire arc to finish before making any commitments towards the series. So my best bet is that they're going to be working on probably one more movie and then announce the series like they did with Resurrection F. Because it means that they have the content in the Moro saga because admittedly, the Moro arc is actually probably one of the best arcs of Super, in fact, not the best. It just depends on how the ending goes, but so far, the character of Moro is actually very interesting. I'll try and keep this as spoiler-free as I can, but Moro is one of those characters who doesn't like fighting for the sake of fighting. Like, he just fights as a means to an end. And that's something that Goku cannot abide by nor understand. Because most act most fighters have some sense of honor and a desire to fight, or they then acquire it. Like Freezer. He basically was that powerful because he was born that way. And initially he doesn't like to fight, but then he gets the kick. He loves, he gets the bug to fight. So then, boy, he does. Um, but Moro, he doesn't see it that way. He sees fighting as just something he has to do in order to get what he wants. 
and that's something that Goku hates. And of and then when Goku like senses Moro's key for the first time, instead of being excited to fight him, he is scared. And Goku being scared of somebody just from sensing their energy, that's a big deal. So you get the feeling that Moro's place in the story is very, very unusual in the sense that, you know, he is causing Goku to feel different things. And that in of itself is very unorthodox. So you feel like the vibe is very, very different. Okay, so um, Dog 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 uh, 777 asks, um, Moro turns good confirmed. Now, I, I this is just what I know. When Moro was a prisoner who was locked up for a very long time, uh, could he have been falsely uh, accused and falsely pr imprisoned? Is because you just said he doesn't like fighting, which makes me go: what, Is he supposed to be Gandhi? What What is the What is the? No, 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 no. no. Well, okay, go ahead and explain it. Okay, no, sure, sure, absolutely. Uh, well, basically, Moro is a straight up necromancer slash warlock. So he is a straight up magic user. And warlocks and magicians basically want, they want power, they want domination, and they basically want these things, and they don't care how they get it. So, so you're saying like bibbity and bobbity? Yes, okay. exactly. In fact, there was a theory going around for a while initially that Morrow may have been the guy who taught bibbity. Like, this is like 10 million years ago. So it would have been around the time when bobbity might, bibbity might have been around, the father of bobbity. So you feel like, wouldn't it have been cool that Moro was the guy who taught Bibbidi and therefore taught him about the concept of Margin Boo? Or maybe even put, be the person who created Margin Boo. So that would have been a very interesting tidbit, but that never happened, unfortunately. That would have been actually really cool. But you feel like, oh, um, no, Moro, for the fact is, he just wants power. He just wants to rule. So basically, he doesn't care how he does it. So it's not like he doesn't want to fight. He doesn't care. He just, he only fights because he has to. But basically, if, if the path was clear, he would just suck up energy, absorb it, and use it to his own ends. That's pretty much how it goes. Okay. So, um, we've been at this for a little bit more than half hour, so I think it's time for a puppy check. How's the puppy? Uh, puppy check, it's like, um... He okay. lost him. You found him? Okay. No, she has now discovered the cat, and they are staring at each other, giving each other a wide berth. They're about within two feet of each other, no hissing yet. There has been a couple of boops on the nose, so... Basically, stalemate right now. Okay. So, um, <laughs> dog dog seven or dog 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 seven 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 really active here. Uh, he basically had no idea that there was even a consideration between Bibbidi Bobbidi and Bo. Um, he, he, it's just it blew his mind. He's basically saying here. So, I mean, I didn't even either. Again, I'm not reading the manga. I, I watched your videos, and there's a couple other people who are covering it. So uh, you, you, you get a sense of what's going on here. Uh, but I, I, as you, because you start with the Broly movie, which I hope they do turn into, because yeah. uh, I did with the other two movies, turn it into part of the series. Um, I would like to see a nice way over everything kind of just comes together at the end. Right. Right, because well, I, I, I think that would be a great approach. I, I would... I have to disagree with you on that, because one of the problems of Super, and the reason why it didn't gain traction, is because they adapted the two movies into the series. Because they spent six months going back over the movies, plots that we'd already seen, and they didn't really add much. Like, there wasn't really any more insight into what you'd expect, and obviously, the, the 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 signs were not that good when in April 2015 they announced that Dragon Ball Super is a thing. They don't even have a logo, and I'm like, you're about to release this in two months' time and you don't even have a logo, right? Okay. And then they do an animated promo where a third of the footage is something you never see in the anime, like a shot of 
Beerus and Champa meeting and then having an argument. You never see that in the anime. So it was really handled poorly. And unfortunately, honestly, the reason they, they didn't adapt it, and this is a crucial thing, in the manga, they never adapted it into the manga. They just, they, there was an acknowledgement that it did happen, but that was it. The movie is its own thing. And to be honest, there's not really much else you can do. It's like, they go to Vampa, they find Broly, they bring him there, they fight on Earth in the Arctic, and then they reconcile. And you end the story with Broly teaching, well, Goku realizing, oh, instead of going to these other universes, which is what he wants to do at the beginning of the movie, he realizes, oh, Universe 7 still has something to offer in the form of Broly. So I don't need to go on the, to these other universes to find strong people to, to train with. And Goku's main mission now is to train Broly and to make him love fighting because for the longest time Broly was only fighting because his father told him to he didn't get any enjoyment out of it and therefore it meant that he didn't he didn't want to fight because you feel like in the movie Broly is the main and antagonist and you get behind him and you feel sorry for him and that's how Broly should have always been but you feel like Goku is the one being the main antagonist against him because he's being very aggressive and then with Gogeta in the end he's basically straight up about to kill him regardless of the fact that Broly is out of control and you realize just before Gogeta is about to actually kill him Broly then regains his senses and you go he's actually terrified because you notice that bit where he gets his pupils back oh no he now realizes what's going on and is now really scared out of his mind he's about to vaporize so then Jilai gets the wish and they're able to you know reset as it were so, realistically, if they were retelling the Broly movie in the anime, it would just be re repeating the same mistake with maybe like a slight recap of the Broly movie or something to maybe even put it on like just to air the Broly movie on TV before the series. That'd be the best thing to do. I was going to say, because um, could you um, imagine make maybe some points they could add to it to make it... I mean, because they did, as, as you said, and, and they did, they tweaked the movie stories in the series a lot a little bit so there was like uh, a little extra you would get if you did if you watch the movie but you and then you watch the series you go okay this is different I mean could they add anything to the Broly movie to be a saga that you think would be worth watching again not really because the first third of the movie the first half an hour is mainly a flashback to Dragon Ball minus so you wouldn't really recover that because that'd just be going going back on what you've already seen, and so you so you you can't up so the movie's a minute and forty so you cut out there so that's an hour and ten, uh, the and then forty minutes of the movie is basically fighting, as in it's just the fight. It's a good so fight though. It's super it's good. It's a good fight. Yes, it's a very good fight. As in it goes on so long, you get really exhausted, but still enjoying it. So that's really only half an hour of extra content, which is like maybe an episode and a half. So the only way you could even possibly make it vaguely tight and acceptable is to make it a mini arc. Like it's a five episode mini arc, mainly. So you'd, that's the way you can maybe add something to it, but not too much. So you, that's the best way you can go about it. Okay, so uh, Zekin1000 asks, Maseko, uh, Misako, whatever, I heard, I've heard that, uh, you saying in the past that you wanted Cumber, which I think is from Heroes, right, to be beefed up, yeah. to be a beefed up Raditz, but Cumber brings in lore from olden times, the ancient Saiyans, Yamoshi, and stuff. He recognized Goku, Super Saiyan, uh, God form, um, and if you look at Dragon Ball Legends, the ancient Saiyans are expanded upon. Just bringing back Raditz would bring forth none of this. Don't you agree? I granted that is very true, but you have to remember that Super Dragon Ball Heroes is there to sell cards. So, yes. The thing is, though, and this is something the moral arc has been doing very well, and this is something I like to call... Uh, vertical integration and by vertical that I mean 
as in in the Morawak, instead of making countless numbers of new worlds and new civilizations that people don't necessarily have a connection to, that's horizontal, as in expanding the law, you know, outwards to things that you may not necessarily be invested in. So instead of that, they're using vertical integration in that they're expanding what we already know. So actually learning more of the people that you know. So, for example, you see a couple more people of the race that Zarbon's from. So you feel like, oh, cool, there's more people from Zarbon's planet. That's awesome. Um, you see more people from the worlds of Pui Pui, that one minion of Barbadies. And you feel, oh, that's cool. The Zunians, that's that's what they're called. So you feel, oh, so they're called the Zunians. Oh, that's awesome. That's cool. We know where Pui Pui came from. And the Yardratians, because Vegeta goes to Yardrat and train. And you actually get to see Yardrat and spend some time there. So you feel like with Torio Taro leading the story, you feel like, that's interesting. Because we're learning more of the stuff we know from being from a kid or from 20 years ago. So you feel like, that's neat. That is something I can get behind. So... Granted, you learn a bit more about the ancient Saiyans, but Kumba does not have any personality at all. Yeah, you're basically told he is an ancient Saiyan, basically. So you feel like, yeah, okay, but you don't really learn much of Kumba. You don't see Kumba from when he was an ancient Saiyan. You don't get a flashback. You don't learn things. You're just told, oh, he's an ancient Saiyan who's really powerful, who's too powerful. You have to contain him. So you feel like, well, okay, if you're being very minimalist in that regard, why don't you just make him a beefed up Raditz from another timeline, and he's basically fighting Goku, it's a rematch. And you feel like, that would sell cards, because you're getting Raditz in, you're giving him a power-up, you're giving him Super Saiyan even, you're making him even a Zaru Raditz against Goku, and you feel like, that would be so cool to see Raditz do more, and to have a rematch, and maybe winning. So you feel like that connection, that investment that people have in Raditz, just even feeling sorry for the guy, you feel like there was a missed opportunity there. So I feel like in Super Dragon Ball Heroes, you need to really take the mission brief in that, in that it's meant to be, there are no rules, canon doesn't exist, go nuts. So you feel like you need to go nuts in the sense of what is even possible in Dragon Ball. So it's like with the first promos you got with Dragon Ball Heroes back in 2010 of seeing Super Saiyan 3 Trunks. And immediately when you see that promo, it's like, oh, okay, this is what I'm in for. This is what I'm expecting. This is basically Dragon Ball. There are no rules. You can tear the rule book up. Anybody can get any power. So, yeah, you need, peop you need to do that. So you need to basically take the storybook from Dragon Ball and plaster over it, over it with crayon. Have you been watching the new season of Heroes? Because uh, uh, the last episode I saw was one where they finished up Hearts and then they, they pre like show off this new version of Trunks and uh, in the group and then Few does his evil maniacal thing and that's, that's where I left off. So, I mean, is it, it's still going, right? It's still a thing. Yes, I, I dropped off it on episode 13 because basically I had enough of it. So I was like, I'm getting really bored of this. This is not engaging me at all. So unfortunately, it's not something that I really invested in. And ugh, seriously, it, and then, then I did catch up with it. And you feel like with Hearts, he's so bland. But then at the same time, the most interesting character in a Super Dragon Ball Heroes to me was the likes of Lags, one of his minions, who's basically a glass girl. The glass girl, Lags, has a very interesting moveset, and there is a manga that contains her, that has her in it, and she, one of, her ultimate attack is a crystal dragon. That already, a crystal dragon, that sounds amazing. Now, one thing you could do in Super Dragon Ball Heroes, and I feel like you're missing a trick here, is that in the anime, they could have had her a crystal dragon going up against Super Saiyan 3 Dragon Fist. So, Golden Shenron versus Crystal Dragon. Two dragons fighting each other. How cool would that be? How many cards could you sell? That in it itself would generate a lot of hype. Because Dragon Fist? Mm, 
Probably one of the most memorable attacks in the series. Thank you for checking out our content. Before you leave, please remember to click like and then subscribe. If you want to receive notifications, do not forget to enable them by clicking on the bell. Then afterwards, check out our social media at Hasledgenet and our website at hasledge.net.